It's time for another musical interlude. Let's get started. Talking with people with music in their genes, their blood, and in their soul. You are watching Musical Interlude. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Musical Interlude. I am your host, Casey Bell, and for this episode, we have Pamela Hopkins. She talks about her collaboration with Matt Dane, Little Things. Let's get started. So my first question, when did you realize you were musically inclined? Um, well, I always thought I was from a little girl when I would belt and sing. <laughs> I don't think I sounded that great back then, but uh, my mom said I would sing everywhere. And then, um, you know, just all the time, belt out wherever I was. She, she's like, you didn't care. You're just singing. But um, I would probably say fourth grade when um, they do like the music testing in elementary school. You know, and they're like, oh, we're, we have the orchestra. And so they test your hearing and uh, to see if you can match pitch and whether tone is higher or lower. So I'd probably say fourth grade going into fifth grade when I started playing cello. The music teacher's like, she's musically inclined. But that was about it. I didn't think I was, but they said I was. So there you go. When did you decide or what happened that made you decide you're going to go into the business, music business? So um, long story short, um, of course, I'm an older female. I'm not young, um, but uh, went all the way through junior high and high school. I played the cello and started singing um, in high school, went to college on a scholarship. And I tried to do something back then and it just kind of fell flat. I felt like I was taken advantage of and I just wanted to quit. So I got out of music completely, um, graduated college you know, got married, had a family. And then about eight years ago, it's like something just sparked back up in me. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And I've always loved to sing and I relearned how to play piano again and kind of took off from there, was given an opportunity to do the dueling pianos and um, really hone in my musical skills that way. And from there, I learned how to play the drums and um, how to play bass and basically all the steps that you do to perform. And that is just, you know, how I guess it's just in me at this point. So I don't know what happened between maybe my kids got older and I was kind of just like, you know, this is, I don't know, I wanted to do it. I always sang in church, but that was about it. You know, I was on praise and worship team for a while. Cool. But yeah. So when, so when you, when the moment came and you said, oh my gosh, I really got to do this. What were some of the steps you, like, what did you know? How did you know what to do, where to start, where to begin? Well, so I was teaching at the time. Um, I have my master's degree in teaching and my husband and I went to a dueling piano bar and I, I always loved going to those. And there was just something about that night that I was just like, I can do this. Like if these guys can do this, I can do this. I can do this. And of course my husband's like, you don't really play piano, <laughs> but I know how kind of surely I can learn. It can't be that hard. I mean, I'm watching them. They can do it. I'm, you know, I got musical skills. And um, I went home and started like pounding on basically my, my, you can't see it, but I have a upright grand piano over here that's from like 19, I think 1918, it's old. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, well, let me see if I can start figuring this stuff out. I knew enough about chords and had a little bit of piano skills from back when I was in junior high school and high school and kind of started playing around with some of the like, two and three chord songs and um went and talked to the guy that was running the show. And I said, Hey, you know, I sing and I can play the piano, but I really couldn't very well. <laughs> what do I need to do? And he said, uh, come back when you have 30 songs memorized <laughs> on the piano <laughs> and you can sing them at the same time. And I was like, well, time to get to work. And every night my family had to listen to me <laughs> bang out the same song. <laughs> So I just went through the list of like most popular uh, two and three chord songs that I already knew the words to and then I could you know try to like muddle my way through playing and then eventually it just got easier and easier and easier and they allowed me to get up on stage and I would get up there for free for like six months wow. <laughs> like you were I was sitting in and um, they were like you know you got a voice like you can sing so we'll just get your piano skills better. And uh, then I was learning more about performing and the format that they were doing. And they finally offered me my first, I guess, paid gig. It was like October 2nd, 
2013, 2013, my first paid night. Hey, we need somebody to play. Are you available? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I think I probably knew a total of 35 songs at the time. And I could read them not well, but I could <laughs> read them. Oh and now they just, you know, you just get better and better and better. And now I can just, I can sight read stuff um, or I just memorize it a lot easier. And then, you know, you try to listen to the whole format with the dueling pianos is doing like the most popular songs of all genres, all decades. So if it was like in the top 40, we're supposed to kind of know it. So when you request it, I can play it. I can sing it. I can carry it off. Either I can or one of my partners can because we switch off every hour. So oh. Yeah. So that's how I got into it. Kind of got into it by like a hard work, <laughs> just going like, this is what I want to do and I'm not going to give up and driving my family crazy. <laughs> cool. So I think I just figured it out. Exactly. But for those who may be watching who have no clue what dueling piano is, there you go. explain that. Okay. So dueling pianos is a concept of where you go into a bar or they do private parties and you have two pianos that pretty much face each other. There's usually a drum set, a guitar player, and, and a, a bass player, but that's usually used like what, what we call changeovers, when the people change. So in the, uh, in the format, when you go and sit down, you request a song. Let's say you wanted Journeys, Don't Stop Believing, okay? And you would say, I want Journeys, Don't Stop Believing, and you throw five bucks with it, and you go up there and you play it. You put it up there on the piano, and one of the players is supposed to play your song. Um, now we do it as a sing along. So I might not always sing all the words. I may stop playing and look at the crowd and say, you guys sing it. And then the whole crowd sings it. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And if you like, I guess, kind of popular music, it's a lot of fun. So we do everything from, I mean, I do current music, country, um, R and B, I even rap. So I do a lot of salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Look at me. I do salt and pepper. <laughs> wow. Well. With what's going on with them now? Right. I don't even know. I don't watch the news. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Then we'll I don't, I, now you had me wondering. I got to go look it up. <laughs> oh, they, they kicked Spinderella out. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So that's what everyone's screaming about. So I have to go read the story now. Yeah. 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 But it's, so it's a lot of fun. It's a big crowd pleasing. Um, you know, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. If you've never been to one, I would suggest finding one in your area or when you go to like a big city, find, you know, finding one and going. It's, if you enjoy music, you enjoy the sing along, clap along. Um, we do funny bits. So it, people celebrate birthdays with us, um, weddings, um, anniversaries, divorces. <laughs> They'll come in and go, I got divorced. And they're like, okay, we have a song for it. And it's usually funny and kind of like a parody of something else. And so there's some comedy value in it too, as well. Um, and a lot of it's improv. So we play off what the crowd's doing. You know, they're not clapping. We may mock them. We might like, we're just sitting there like this too. You know, you okay? <laughs> you know, or whatever. So um, I enjoy that part of my music career and that part of my music career has allowed me to branch out and do, um, you know, my independent stuff. So it's, it's been very, very good for me, um, to supply my, my money to <laughs> cut my songs. <laughs> Sounds like lots of fun. <laughs> right. It is. So tell me who Matt Dame is and talk about how little things came about. Oh, okay. Um, so Matt Dame, um, just to back up a little bit about, I guess, my past, uh, back in 1998. So I graduated in 1997, got married from college, you know, got married and I couldn't find a better job. So my husband was a police officer at the time. And I was like, you know, that looks like fun. I think I'll do that. So I applied to be a police officer. <laughs> That looks like fun. <laughs> yeah, it looks like fun. It's like fun. Well, I was always into helping people. So, I, you know, they, it kind of fit my, my personality. And um, in 1998, I was hired uh, with Jacksonville, Arkansas Police Department and went to the academy and all that stuff. Well, along the way, I eventually moved into the D.A.R.E. program um, and taught in schools, which is how I became a teacher later on. But through that process, I've met a lot of officers along the way that um, I've become pretty good friends with. Well, one guy, I think his name is Dustin, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head, if I'm remembering correctly, is related to Matt Dame. And he came into the piano bar and we became friends and he was talking because we were all in law enforcement at one time. So we talked cop talk. And um, he was like, do you know, do you know Matt Dame? And I was like, no, I don't know who that is. 
And he said, oh, well, he used to be a Cersei cop. He's from Batesville, Arkansas. And I was like, never heard of him. And then another friend of mine said the same thing. Well, you sing and he sings. Y'all need to get together and y'all need to do a duet. Your voices would be great together. And I was like, I don't know this dude. I don't even know who he is. Uh, so I looked him up and I was like, well, let me see who they're talking about, this Matt Dame guy. And I listened to his song, Whiskey and Memories, and fell in love with that song and his voice. And I reached out with, out to him and I basically was like, hey, I want to write a song. I want it to be a duet. Here's the title. Here's the premise of where I want it to go. Would you be willing to do that with me? And he said, yeah, sure. Why not? He said, uh, by the way, he goes, my cousin, so-and-so said that I needed to meet you. <laughs> so that person had been telling both of us, which is kind of funny. Um, and we sat down over a Zoom meeting. Um, he asked if he could bring another friend of his in named Trafton Harvey. He said, do you mind if I bring Trafton in? He's really good with lyrics. And I said, absolutely. You know, that's fine. Uh, and so I sent him my notes because I keep notes in my phone sent him my notes and said, here is what I have, but I can't write from a guy's point of view because obviously I'm not a man. I can only say the things that are important to me as a woman. And as somebody who's been with, I've been with my husband for 25 and a half years. So um, we've been married for a little over 23, but you know, what keeps people together? What makes them break up? Is it the big things, the little things or whatever? And um, we sat down and over about an hour and a half, we wrote the song beginning to end and uh he sent it to me and then when I went to Nashville to cut it he met me at the studio it was the first time I'd ever met him in person <laughs> and we took pictures together so the picture you see that that's it that was the one and only time I've ever met him in person and uh we recorded the song and that's what we got it turned out and I love it I thought it turned out absolutely better than what I expected so personally speaking <laughs> I like it a lot so what has been the experience like because you knew you were into singing and you were into music, but you decided I'm going to be a police officer. And then when you decided to do the music, I'm sure there really was no book, no school to tell you how to do that. So what was that experience like getting to, because I'm not too sure where you live now and how close that is to Nashville and the traveling to, to whatever you did, to the studio time, all the things you learned, what was the whole process right. like? Um, so if I'm going over two different decades, uh, what have you, um, the first time I went to Nashville was out of high school after my first year of college. Um, so I was 19 and my experience just wasn't that great. I cut it. I cut an album, all original songs. Of course, back then it was a cassette tape. They didn't have albums back then. They have albums, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Streaming was not a thing. And <laughs> the cheaper way to do it was you got a cassette tape. Yeah. I'm, I'm dating myself now, but, uh, I, I just didn't have a great experience with the producers I was with. And I kind of got jaded and I was like, I, I'm done. Of course, I knew nothing. You know, my parents knew nothing. Um, Arkansas, where I live, is about five, five and a half hours from Nashville. Um, I just, I didn't know enough. And I felt like I was taken advantage of and I quit. I was like, I don't want to do this. I just don't want to do it. So I went ahead and got my degree and got married, did a career, went a different path. Um, did karaoke every now and then. And then when I finally came back around to music, um, doing the, the dueling piano thing and then cutting my first EP as, I guess, an adult on my own, um, three or four years ago, started that process with some original sounds. And I was like, I want to know what I sound like, you know, because for at that time, five years, I've been playing everybody else's music and singing, you know, singing Alicia Keys and playing her stuff and singing Journey and Miranda Lambert and every other artist known to man. And I was like, but I don't know what Pam sounds like. So I reached out to uh, Susan Irwin. Um, she's married now. So it's Susan Prowse now and uh, her husband Cliff and they had a small studio still do here in Arkansas. And she had some connections to Nashville and um, basically got me with some songwriters. And I said, well, I need songs. Obviously I don't want to cut a popular song because then I'm going to be compared to that person. So I need to cut something nobody's heard before. So if you listen to my first EP, which is With or Without You, um, there are five original songs on it and a cover of Zombie by the Cranberries. And I did that one only because it was a most a popular song that I got requested and I like the song. But I had five, uh, five originals. No, let me get back there. Six originals, one, one cover. 
<laughs> and um, started working on um, my original sound and starting to learn basically how to go to CD Baby and put my music out. And there's a large learning curve because if you don't do it in the right order, things don't happen or they happen late and then the opportunities passed. I'm still learning. Um, you know, I eventually got a website and, you know, started working, having merch and pushing that stuff and doing festivals and having a band. And those things have just come as the need has arisen. And then now where I'm at in the last probably six months, eight months, I wanted to start writing more music. So I started connecting with other Nashville writers, um, one being Matt Dame, who has lived in Nashville now for 15 years. And I think he's in Muscle Shoals now. Um, 15 plus years and I met a few other writers and we just started, I have every other week I'm in writing sessions now. So building up my portfolio, learning as I go, <laughs> listening to people who know more than me and uh, trying not to be taken advantage of. <laughs> I, that's the, probably the best path I can tell you is, and I'm working on it every single day, every single day. I'm reading something about performing better, um, looking at vocal care, I'm, you know, pushing out social media things and what can I be doing to push my song further along? So that's what I'm doing now. And it's just been a process of learning. It's a lot when you're doing it yourself. It's a lot. It's overwhelming sometimes, but it's worth it. I enjoy it. So I heard you say music festivals. Yes. What is it like now being that there really is no such thing as music festivals and there's no telling when that's going to come back to life. Um, I know that there's virtual concerts, but there's nothing like being in right. front of an actual audience. So how's, what did this do to you and how, how have you, as everyone's been saying, pivoted? How do you pivot? Yeah. Um, so you, you basically just go, you roll with it. Um, I was in the first ever running Yadaloo um, here in Arkansas, which is the country music festival. And um, I was the opening act for it last year. This year they were going to do it again, but it pivoted to online, um, which I was part of as well. So if you go to yadaloo.com, you can, I think it's yadaloofest.com, you can see how they did it. But it was very well produced. I, I was just part of it. Now I am going to be part of another festival in Newport, Arkansas, uh, June 4th. It's a music festival and it's going to be live in person. So most of the festivals, unless it was online, just like you said, they just stopped, you know, and some were like, well, we're just gonna take this year off. And luckily Yadaloo did not. So I was able to still do it, but that was my first one. Cause like I said, this has kind of been a new, new thing in the last couple of years that I'm, I'm just getting my feet wet here, 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 wherever I can perform outside of the dueling realm. I do, you know, and you give me an opportunity, I'm, I'll sing for you. You know, that's just, what I'm doing right now, getting my voice out, getting my, my name out. So did I answer the question? Yes. <laughs> I did or not. <laughs> sure did. Like I'm rambling. Sorry. No problem. So any advice for anyone out there who like you, I mean, I hate to hear that, but it seems to be the thing that everyone's saying that when they get into the music business, they get taken advantage of or they're mistreated or their contract is not good. Any advice you have for people out there to get in the business and to make sure that doesn't happen to them? The only thing I've kind of learned is and where I stand with it is owning your own stuff and not allowing others to say, oh, let me sign you a contract. And then they own everything you do. Being independent, there are certain things you can do that will certainly help you get in other markets um, if you're working hard and you're making the right connections. Obviously, everybody wants the big deal with Sony, you know, or the big deal with, you know, BMG or whoever. Uh, because that's going to push you out in a, at least in America commercially um, and allow you to tour as a big name. But I would say, and, and I don't, like I said, I haven't dealt with this this time around where I've had somebody go, oh, I'm going to do all this stuff for you. I just don't put my eggs in that basket. I, my, my eggs are in my own basket. So I'm going to make sure that, you know, I don't expect these things from somebody um, and that I'm very clear when I sign something with somebody or I'm paying some, somebody something that I know I'm getting what I'm paying for um, up front. Uh, so I was with, and I'm not going to name any names, uh, one management team. They're like, oh, we're going to do this, 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 and this. And I paid them my $500 and they did about a third of it. And I'm like, yep, that was a dead lesson learned, even though I did research. And I always tell people, research, research, research. Google um, is your friend. <laughs> you can find <laughs> reviews on people. 
Um, and then, you know, the new management team I'm with, um, can I say the name? I don't know if I can. MTS management. You can bleep That's, that out yeah. if you need to. Yeah. That should be fine. Yeah. So MTS management, um, Michael's been great. He's, he's, uh, I'm new with him and, um, he has done nothing but impress me this last week. And so I'm, I'm happy with the way it's going. Um, so I would just say, do your due diligence and talk to people who've been with whoever you're trying to do business with, because there are a lot of people that have their hand out, you know, Oh, I'm gonna help you get streams. Well, you know, if you read Spotify's, um, their actual, speaking of Spotify streaming, you know, you see advertisements all the time. We'll get you X amount of streams. They're not bots. They're this or that. But when you look at their tutorials, it sits there and tells you like, you can't, if they're telling you that you're paying for a service, it, they're bots, they're lying. You know, this is the way you need to get on this. And yes, you can find curators, but curators won't necessarily charge you a whole lot and guarantee you stuff. You know, they may put you on a playlist, but this is not the way to do it. So just doing your due diligence and not just grabbing a hold of things just to think it's going to get you somewhere. Because if it did, then we'd all be somewhere bigger, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's Pretty a reason much. they're running those ads. There's a reason they're running those ads. So you just got to keep that in mind. You know. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> So my last question for you, this is a fun question, um, oh, pretend hope. question. Sure. The reason why I say pretend because the person can be either dead or alive. Awesome. But if there's anyone out there in the music business, producer, uh, composer, singer, anyone um, that you would like to work with on a project, who would it be and why? Can I have a few? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay, so if I'm talking about songwriting kind of things, I'm thinking like, you know, Prince or Michael Jackson. I, I used to, they were like so, such big influences in my life growing up and just being able to pick their brain over how they come up with some of the, the ideas that they come up with, um, like baffles me. And, you know, I think I said in another interview, especially, you know, I'm not a, a big dancer. I, I think in my mind I can dance, but I'd like to find some moves from Michael Jackson, you know, <laughs> um, probably those two songwriting wise, um, or Carol King, she had a lot of great, you know, as a female uh, songwriter, um, performers, and even Dolly Parton. Um, I, I would love to pick, she's still living. So I, I, I would love to uh, have dinner with her just for her, her funny wisdom <laughs> and uh, some of her songwriting. And just, I just, I find her very charming. So I would say overall, maybe if, if I had a, a living person, uh, probably Dolly Parton. Like I would love to just meet her and chit chat with her and pick her brain on certain things and, I don't know. She just seems fun and, and laughable. And she looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I try to live for the, for the day. So whatever I can do that day to make my life better or somebody else's life better and, and smile and try to work towards something bigger, you know, it's baby steps and this is all baby steps. If you're, if you sit and do nothing, that's what you'll get. So, you know, it's, it's moving step by step, even if they're small. You know, I look back at a year ago and a year ago, I just had a band starting out. You know, I just had put it together a band and um, now, you know, we're doing things as a band and now my music's getting out more. So it's, it's baby steps and it's working every day. So being able to talk to some of them, like I said, Dolly Parton, um, about just work ethic even, you know, what, what did you do, you know, to get yourself doing what you need to do? What was their work schedule? Because it was different back then than it is now. So, yeah, I think that's been Long. It's those little things that make my heart melt. Everything that you won't find in a fairy tale. But it wakes me up and puts me to bed. Looking back, I know I'm blessed. It ain't white picket fences, fancy cars, and diamond rings. It's those little things. How to cook like my granny did How to leave a trace of lipstick on my lips mm -hmm. You know just what turns me on Just what turns me on Like the way you dance with me And lead me down the hall It's those little things that make my heart melt I'm in a fairy tale It's what wakes me up and puts me to bed Looking back I know I'm 
That's all the time we have for you today on Musical Interlude. I'm so happy you came to join us. I want to thank our guest, Pamela Hopkins, and of course you, the audience, the viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to watch another CSB television production. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you.